It's been said that every quilt tells a story, and it's so true. But I also believe every quilter has a story to tell. I wanted to hear about the people behind these wonderful quilts and thought you'd enjoy hearing about their lives also. Welcome to A Quilter's Life. Purple Daisy Quilt Designs is the culmination of Jody Leonardo's experiences of participating in sewing groups, working in quilt shops, and selling handmade quilts. Now she has expanded to offering quilt patterns to allow individuals to make their own quilts. This is a dream come true for Jody, and she's so excited to share a little piece of her creative world with us. Jody, thank you so much for joining us on A Quilter's Life. Thank you for having me. I am so glad I saw an article on one of your quilts in which magazine was that again? <laughs> Quick and easy, I think. And it was the Christmas one. Yep. What a cute article that was. Wonderful quilt. And it showed partial seams. Now, I just learned to do partial seams this past year. And they gave a really nice page after your article to show exactly how to do that. Now, did you put that extra page together or did they bring that in? So with Quick and Easy, they actually do all the writing. I design the quilt. I send them all of the measurements. I did not design it with partial seams because I, I don't like to do partial seams. So that was their call to do the partial seams. But I understand why they would have done that. But yeah, they are one of the magazines that actually I don't have to do any of the writing, which is kind of nice. Wow. That was a surprise. Uh, let's jump back into Jody. share where you were born and raised. I was born in New Haven, Connecticut. I lived there until fifth grade and then moved to Minnesota in Kenyon, Minnesota, actually, which is in southeast section of the state. I've been here ever since. I currently live in Farmington, Minnesota, which is about 20 minutes south of Minneapolis, St. Paul. Do you have a special childhood memory, whether it's in New Haven or in Minnesota? I think the biggest thing for me is I come from a large Italian family. And so holidays and get togethers are always very chaotic and crazy. And as a child, I think you love that as an adult, not so much. <laughs> but I remember just the holidays being in the kitchen and my grandmother's cooking and my aunt's cooking and my mom's in the kitchen and all the kids are running around. And that's just always a really, really fond memory for me. So when you moved to Minnesota, were your grandparents still in Connecticut? I moved to Minnesota with my mom after my parents split. So all of my family lives out in Connecticut, except for my brother, my youngest brother, and I live here in Minnesota. Do you get to visit in Connecticut and your family there then? Yes, I go at least once a year. Unfortunately, my father passed away about two years ago. And so it's been kind of a weird thing to think about going back. I mean, I have cousins and I have a brother lives out there and a stepsister and all the, you know, everybody lives out there. But I haven't been back since he passed away. And so I have to make that trek one of these days. It's a hard thing to do. Other than quilting, have you had other employment? Yes. Over the years, I've worked in several quilt shops, and I worked for Robert Kaufman for many years just in their patterns department. I read all their free patterns. If you're familiar, they always have a ton of free patterns that they make available to everybody. So I was in there, and I answered customer questions. But on top of that, I actually worked as a business manager in the mental health field for over 20 years. So I did all of that together at the same time. And recently in July of 2023, I left that job. And I now am a sales rep for Riley Blake Designs. Oh, wow. So you've been in and around the quilting business for quite a while, plus yes. the mental health. 
Yes. Well, I have to mention, I love the Robert Kaufman app I have on my phone. I use it for every quilt. I've heard that from people. So how did you end up in Farmington? When I got married, my husband worked in Lakeville. When we bought our first house, we moved closer to where he worked. At the time, I was a nail technician, and I worked up here, and so we bought our house up here, and we really haven't left. And you know, once you have children, you stay where their life is, and that's where we've stayed. So is it more of a country setting? I would say it's a suburban city, but it's not that far. Like where my house currently is right now, my backyard is a field where they farm and there's a dairy farm, like literally kitty corner. So on really good days, we get to smell the beautiful smell of that. So though I have the convenience of, because I don't like shopping and I order all my stuff online and have it delivered, I have the convenience of that. But I also have the part where I don't have anybody living behind me and I live in a community and that kind of thing. Cool. Jody, is there anything else about your family that you would like to share? Well, I do have two children, Jory and Jaden, and they're 25 and 23. So they're older and have moved on. My oldest is married. My youngest is getting married in the next couple of years. So definitely has been the precipice of me being able to do more in this world because my children are raised and on their own and they're great boys and I loved being a boy mommy. (laughs) I'm picturing you went to a lot of sporting events. Yes both my children were very active in sports football, baseball, lacrosse. So I spent many days (laughs) running from field to field. And luckily I had a really great relationship with their dad after we split. And so we just like tag teamed, you know, one would go one way and one would go the other way and we made it happen. So I personally do not miss those days. I know a lot of parents kind of wish they were back there. I do not. (laughs) I do not miss that at all. Enjoy the break. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) If you had the opportunity to talk to your great, great, great grandchildren, how would you describe yourself to them? What would you like them to know about who you were? I would say I would like them to know that I am independent and strong willed, resilient, a hard worker, creative. And I just have a very strong sense of family and love. And family to me isn't just about blood. It's about the people that are there for you when you need them. And I would like them to know that that's kind of where my heart kind of lays. And then what would you want to say to them? You know, I think about this with my own children. And hopefully I will have grandchildren someday and I can say the same thing to them. But I think the biggest thing for me is to be genuine, be who you are and not be afraid to be who you are, even if it ruffles the general consensus. My youngest, he kind of marched to his own drum. And I just love that part of him is that he really didn't care. And if he wanted to wear two different socks, he wore two different socks and he didn't care what other people said. And I I appreciate that about him because that's not how I was or grew up. And even as an adult, I have a hard time with that. And I really want my next generation to know that there's more to life and then take it slow. Life goes very quickly. Mm -hmm. Besides quilting, What other crafts do you do or have you done in the past? Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm a habitual crafter. I crochet, which I learned to do way, way back. My aunt, Auntie Alberta, taught me to crochet when I was young, young. And then it wasn't until probably 
I would say two years ago that I picked it back up and then it just clicked for me. I don't know what it was. I'm not sure why, but it just happened. So I do that. I cross stitch. I embroider. I do some long arming only for myself, just so I can get projects completed. I want to learn other things <laughs> like punch needle and all those crazy things. But, you know, time is obviously short. How about hobbies? Well, quilting is my hobby, really. I guess anything in that realm, like embroidering, I've been doing a lot of like wool stuff, like making wool things. But really my passion and my love is with quilting. Sometimes I think of hobbies as like baking, exercise. Reading. I love to read. Absolutely love to read. And I like to be outside. In Minnesota, our summers and springs are pretty short. So I try to be outside as much as I can. But really, reading has always been something I've done to escape from things, to relax. So that's a big part for me. I actually get kind of annoyed that I can't read fast enough so I can read more books. <laughs> I wish I could read faster so I could read more books because there's so much great stuff out there. Uh huh. Do you think any of your other crafts or any of your hobbies show up in your quilting? Yes. Embroidering for sure has shown up. I've done embroidered projects that I've turned into actual quilts. I'm hoping someday, maybe, maybe to maybe write a pattern that has some of that in there. I actually have one currently that you could turn into something that you could put embroidered blocks into, but for sure, embroidery and coloring fabric has shown up in my quilting. You've gotten into dyeing some fabrics yourself? It's actually coloring with like crayons and pencils. So I'll color the design, like the embroidery design. This is not new. <laughs> I didn't make it. Crabapple Hill, she has a ton of embroidery and she's well known for that. And so I started it when I found her. And so you sketch out the design and then you color it with either crayons or colored pencils. And then you embroider over it and it just completely changes the project. I don't know who it was, but I just saw that this past week and I had to call my husband over to take a look at it because that was such amazing work. With that, do you do any of that on the sewing machine or do you do all of it by hand? By hand. Tell me about who introduced you to quilting. I actually got introduced to quilting in high school. Back when they actually had home ec classes. So one semester was quilting and the other semester was sewing garments. And I just still to this day cannot figure out the garment thing. I don't know. My brain just does not. I don't know. It just doesn't compute it. So I attached myself to quilting and have literally been quilting ever since. But I really fell in love with it when I was working at a hair salon and I met my friend Mary. And she was a quilter and we used to get together. We used to, we still do. That's when really I fell in love with it. And she's really literally taught me everything from quilting to cross stitch and embroidery. All those things started when I met her. So she's been a pretty big influence in my life. Whether it's a quilt that you made or that someone else made, do you have a favorite quilt? Oh, boy. Yeah, that's tough. I would say that my favorite is one that I made. It's my recent pattern called Kenzie, and I made it with cherry wood fabrics. I worked with Carla to really come up with a great kind of dimensional type of colorway, and I think that might be my favorite. I've done so many quilts, though. It's hard for me to... <laughs> to Say one or the other, but if I had to pick one, that would be one I would, I would pick. And cherry wood fabrics are so beautiful. She does a great job. They are beautiful, and they really change the whole dynamic of a quilt when you use them. Hmm. I haven't used them yet, but I met her at QuiltCon, so I've been looking at her fabrics. They are beautiful. 
we have so many tools to choose from. Is there a tool that you are so happy that you have? I don't know. <laughs> to be honest, I have so many that I like. I mean, obviously, I need a sewing machine. So that would be my first choice. And then I would actually say that my favorite lately has been Seem So Easy by Lori Holt. I hate drawing lines for half square triangles. And so you put it on your sewing machine and it's round. It's got all the lines. And I use that all the time to do my half square triangles and my flying geese because I do not like to draw the lines at all. Great. Yeah, it's great. I love it. Were you as surprised as I was about all the steps in quilting? Yes. (laughs) And I don't like all of them. (laughs) (laughs) Well, what step do you like the most? I absolutely hate binding. (laughs) Hate it. But it has to be done. Though, Angela Walters always talks about how she has gone and done trunk shows and her quilts hadn't been bound. And so I recently did my first guild talk and I just didn't have time to bind one of the quilts that I needed to bring with me and I didn't have time to even quilt one of them, which I think is a little more acceptable not quilting something but than not binding something and so I did pull an Angela when I did that because I just didn't have time to do it but I do not like binding actually my thing that I love the most is picking out the fabric I love playing with color and texture and doing different things. And then the second thing would be putting it together. I love when we're putting it together and you can start seeing, hey, that's exactly what I had in mind or this is turning out different. Yes. Share your worst quilting experience. Well, the first thing that pops into my brain was the first attempt I made and I've had many, so... I'm not perfect at all and actually embrace the fact that I'm not perfect. I did a one block wonder. My first one block wonder, I tried to do it from the book. I tend to be more of a visual learner. So video and like graphics, which of course turns into how my patterns are written. It's all words and there's not a lot of detail as far as graphics. I tend to not do well with that. So I tried to do it from the book. I got all the fabric cut out. I was starting to make it and it just was not, I don't know, it wasn't working. It did not work well. So that went in the garbage. And from that day forward, of course, this is another Maryism. I'm not afraid to throw something in the garbage that is not bringing me joy. Wow, you don't even put it in a scrap pile. No, because at that point, I'm so tired of looking at it that it will never be something that I love. (laughs) why do you make quilts why do you think out of anything you could do that you continue to come back to quilting I initially made quilts because I love giving things to people if I had a million dollars I'd be broke because I just love giving special unique things to the people I love but now it's about For me, a little bit is a challenge of, can I do that? Sometimes when I do something different, it's not because I even like it. It's because I'm like, well, can I do that? Am I capable of doing that? And I love seeing color come out in a quilt. And of course, modern quilting is super popular right now. So I tend to kind of be drawn to that. It's a really a creative process and it does get hard when you are trying to make a business out of your joy. Um, There are days that it does suck the joy out of that process, but really it's just making something. And honestly, I don't have a ton of back quilts. Like I don't have piles of quilts everywhere because I give them away to anybody and everybody. I actually had a quilt. Someone was delivering groceries to my house and I had this quilt in my hand actually I don't know what it was I don't know why I must have been doing something with it and I just had this pull that said you need to go out and hand this quilt to that person and I did 
I've never done that before. And it was a really like a wonderful thing for me, for my heart. And I hope that they really enjoyed it too. But yeah, I just love giving them to people. Mm -hmm. And who do you usually give them to? Well, obviously, (laughs) random strangers. My family, I give them to my family, my friends. I have sold some. I dabbled a little bit in it, selling some of them. I might do it again in the future. You know, I had a little bit of success with it. And then I just got so busy. And you do have to take really good photos. And it's just time consuming. And I just haven't gotten back to it. So eventually I will. Right now, because I need all of the things that I'm working on, I haven't been giving them away because I need them for marketing and that kind of stuff. But it happens. I've had someone who was putting carpet in my house recently and he was talking about his new grandbaby. And I'm like, hey, you want a quilt? (laughs) So he got a new quilt too. (laughs) Oh, I hope they realize how special these quilts are. I hope so too. Are you working on a special project right now? I guess I'm working on something that's been sitting in my box for a while. I did the embroidery. It's one of those projects where I've colored it and embroidered it. The embroidery has been done for years. And I was like, you know, I really need to get that out of the box and get it made. So I had two of them. One was a Halloween and one is like a camping theme. So I'm working on getting those projects done and out of the box. Share a quilting tip. I would say that there is no right or wrong. I think that the quilting world sometimes can make new sewers or new quilters feel like there's a right and wrong, and there really isn't. I am really influenced by other designers like Gudrun, and she always talks about playing outside of the box, taking something and doing what you want with it. And I think that that's what makes quilting so special is that you can. There's a t-shirt out there that says, I am not the quilt police. There is no such thing. Just do what makes you happy. Who cares what it looks like as long as you're happy with it. Jody, describe how you went from having quilting as a hobby and it became a business for you. It was kind of by mistake a little bit. I did start selling already made items as part of the business. That's how it really started. But I really don't get happiness out of remaking the same thing over and over again. It's very rare that you'll ever see me like redo a pattern, which is interesting since now I have to remake my patterns all the time. But I'm not someone who can manufacture things. It's just not in me. It doesn't make me happy. So that just really wasn't really working. And when I was working for Robert Kaufman, it was like an accidental thing. I wasn't even thinking about pattern design. I didn't even think it was something I could do or even had any confidence in it. I mean, if you're in the quilting world, you know, there are a lot of designers out there and there are some really great designers. And I just didn't know if any of that was me (laughs) really. And I happened to design something for them for their free patterns and it just happened. I mean, they taught me how to use Illustrator and a really good friend that works there and she was just instrumental in helping me figure out that process. I'm still like, I know literally a little tiny piece of like that whole world of Illustrator and InDesign, but that's kind of how it happened. And then started sketching stuff on a pad. And then I knew there was no way that I was going to design quilts on a piece of paper. (laughs) I knew that there was something easier and better. And so that's kind of how I got into like the illustrator part and in design. And it was kind of an accidental thing. And now I'm at a place, I am by far not super well known. My last pattern has It's been very popular and has done really well in the grand scheme of things. But I've kind of slowed a little bit. And I'm just sort of like trying to figure out what my next thing is going to be. And I have designs. I just got to sit down. But the worst part is writing the pattern. I think (laughs) I can make quilts all day long of the things that I think of. But sitting and writing it 
so that I feel that someone knew because the goal for me is always to have my patterns, whether it's an advanced technique or not, someone who is new could pick it up and do it because there's enough information in there for them. And so that's hard to make sure that's done, but that's kind of how it happened. It was an accidental thing. Share the name of your business and how you came up with the name. The name of my business is Purple Daisy Quilt Designs. And I've had this name forever. I mean, I think I thought of it back in high school. I love the color purple. And my favorite flower is a Gerber daisy. And so that's kind of how it came up. I really wanted it to be Purple Daisy Quilts, but that was already taken. So yeah, that's where we're at. You've been making patterns, like you said, the free ones and all, but when you got the sale... That first pattern, do you remember how exciting that was? It was really exciting. I actually think that my first magazine pattern came out before I released my first like own pattern. And so I kind of probably the worst business person in the entire world because I have such a hard time promoting myself. And so I had a mixed feeling of, should I be happy about this? Is that a good thing? Do people still read magazines? You know, like those kinds of things. So it's exciting. And I tried not to be overly, I tend to play the downside just so that it's a protection thing, I think, more than anything. But it was really exciting. And even still to this day, I mean, I don't sell hundreds and hundreds of patterns, but every time I get a message that I got, just the other day, I got a notification on my website that said someone purchased pattern. I'm like, yay, you know. We mentioned the one magazine, but you were in another magazine, I think maybe even before the one I saw you in. Yes. So I've done Quilters World Spring of 2023, I think. And then I've done Quilters World three times and then quick and easy once. So I think I have four designs out there oh cool and I saw on your website I saw two magazines listed I was just assuming that it was those two but you got to do quilters world three times yeah I haven't posted the other two I don't think yet did you reach out to the magazines or did they reach out to you my initial experience was I reached out to them to get on a call out list Every magazine does things a little bit different. Quilters World does a call out every time they need designs for publications. But there's one that they don't put out anything. You just send in a design and they kind of sit on it until they figure they're never going to use it. And then they send an email to you like once every couple of years saying, we're not going to use your design, which is really hard because that means you're not using that design. So Annie's, which is Quilters World, Quick and Easy, which is Fonts and Porters, they do call outs. And so I can decide, is it fit what I have? Do I have time to create something new? Sometimes it's something I have in like a, what I call an archive um, that I can adjust. Like there's one right now sitting out there that I think I'm going to submit for Quilters World. Annie's does like special publications where it'll be all based on Halloween. Like I actually had a design that I did. They accepted, they paid me for it. And then there was no interest in the magazine. So they never even published it. So then the design comes back to me and then I can release it. So there's a lot of different ways that the magazines do things differently. And keeping that all straight, if you want to apply, that has to be difficult. (laughs) Yeah. Do you keep a big spreadsheet? You know, I try not to do too much. I think I've done like maybe one or two a year since I've started the process. And that makes it a little bit easier. And like I said, they all do things a little different. Even with writing the pattern, I don't have to like write a formal pattern like I would to sell to the public, right? I just write it and then they put it in there tech way, you know, do it the way that's going to fit in the magazine. And so it's a lot less pressure to write a pattern for a magazine. 
I think the pressure is coming up with something if you want to submit something because they do have specific things that they're looking for for those particular publications. Interesting. What else would you like to share about your business? Right now, I'm offering PDF patterns and printable patterns. I'm hoping in the future to be doing more kits, things that are specific to the pattern itself. I haven't quite gotten that far yet in making that happen. Part of that too is pictures and all of the things that go along with it. So I've just sort of been hanging back on that one. But yeah, I'm hoping in the future I'll have a little bit more stuff to offer people. And I'm always looking for suggestions from people who are looking at it and like, hey, do you have this? Do you have that? It gives me an idea of what to provide. I mean, as you know, if we working in quilt shops, if we knew exactly what customers wanted, we'd probably be rich, right? Because it's always changing. The industry is always changing. The styles are always changing. The colors are always changing. So I'm always looking for feedback on what people are looking for. Did you mention something about trunk show? Yes, I did a guild trunk show recently. I actually have another one coming up. I'm just starting to kind of dabble in doing that stuff. So I'm open to doing trunk shows for guilds or quilt shops or anything like that. So I have the information on my website, but can always email me. Great. And share the website address, please. It's purpledaisyquiltdesigns.com. Great. Jody. thank you again so much for joining me on A Quilter's Life. I love hearing your story and sharing about your business. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye. You can find more stories on aquilterslife.com or subscribe on your favorite podcast player so each episode will be downloaded automatically. Also, I want to hear about you and your wonderful quilts. Please contact me, Paula Chamberlain, through the website to set up an interview. And as always, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.